my first experience in the film business was right, right after the Korean War. I graduated from USC and I went back to see about some work I could be doing. And that particular day, I was there, it was the 5th of February, they got a telephone call from Warner Brothers and they said, do, do you have any officers coming back from the Korean War? And I just came back from the Korean War and, and they said, well, you'd be perfect. So I went out to Warner Brothers and I was one of the officers in Ronald Reagan's film called Prisoners of War. That started me in more or less into the film business, but I had no idea that I would ever get into it as a profession. From there I went down to Muscle Beach where I lived down there, and that's where I met Joe Gold, who he and I started the Gold Gym. One thing led to another and another, and then being in great shape there, because Joe had been with Mae West in, in, in a couple of shows, and she liked me, and she said, oh, I'd like to have you be my show. She saw the way I worked in front of her. She wanted everybody to believe that she is making love to all of us. One day I saw a sign up in the World, World Gym, I mean the Tiny's Gym, looking for a new Hercules, and I sent a photo to Rome, and I forgot all about it, and became a superstar in my first film. The first film I did was Machista in the Valley of the Cyclops and we're working like 18 hour days. I thought, <laughs> I was six days a week. In fact, I didn't know where I lived half the time. They'd drive me up and I'd go to sleep and I'd get up and, and, and I had to sleep all day Sunday because I was so, so wiped out and I was trying to, working out all the time, trying to keep in great shape, which I was in great shape in that film. And it became so talk of the town because they saw all this action going on and everything. I was doing my own stunts and jumping and <laughs> doing everything else. And before the film finished, they already told me they had this other film, the, the Gigante Metropolis, the one of Mimo Salvi. They want me to do it, and so I had two days off. And then when you saw that scene in the beginning of it, that's at Mount Vesuvio in Naples. We're shooting there all the time, the, the outdoor scenes. Hear me, my sons. My strength is waning now. They, they just took a soundtrack. They didn't take direct sound. They just took a soundtrack, a guide track, which we were called. And that was the reason I did the, the scenes, and I made up my own, my own dialogue going along through there. In Machista, the sun is going down, and they hand me a big page of dialogue in Italian. I said, what are you talking about? But the sun's going down. And so the, my guide, I mean my interpreter said, do you know any nursery rhymes in English? I said, yes. But I, that was the only time I really got angry, and I can tell the public this, this act, because Bill Comstock, he, he saw my film, he, he realized I was saying something different. And I, was, I said, maybe you can use this or not, but little Bo Peep, come blow your sheep. <laughs> and these are the type of little dialogue things, I in nursery rhymes, but Mary had a lamb, wherever she went, she stepped in sheep shit. The dubbing part, see, in my contract, I didn't, I never took direct sound. I said, I can't stand around and wait for you when you're going to, six months from now, when you're going to start dubbing the film, because I might be in another film. If I'm free, I will do it. But I never had time ever to, to, to dub my voice. No, that's impossible. There are too many of them. Somebody else dubbed my voice in English. And then I have them dubbed in French or wherever it happens to be. I started a film studio of my own called Cavi Film Story. When you look at it, it looks like Cave, it's Cavi, C-A-V-E. I had no idea what I was getting into. When I did the Westerns, I did most of the Westerns in my own studio. But I probably am the only actor in the world that worked in his own studio, making his own, and, and, and the producer is renting from me, my studio, and he's hiring me to work in his film. Because most of the time I was working all the time, rebuilding. I had big bulldozers there. In between scenes, I'm in a bulldozer, I'm in some other place working. Uh, keep building all the time. So most of the time to, to, to do a film, the scenes in the film, is just a joke for me. Go over and do some, take a scene, and do it, and run over again in a bulldozer or with the carpenters or whatever happens to be. I play the good guy, the bad guy, and in between guy <laughs> in all the films. And that's how you work. You never stop. People who retire don't live very long because they get bored and then happen. So either film, I'm going to go next week to Munich I'm going to teach the kids how to how to, to act in for the for the Munich Television School. When I come back, then I have to go back to to New York to have a big gallery open for some more of my paintings. Like I mean, I had no idea. Six months ago, I had no idea I could be painting all this stuff. Even before that, years before that, I never thought 
38, I mean, I was 38 then, I went to Rome at 38 years of age and became a superstar. Now, at 78, I became a, a superstar in the painting business. I mean, Arnold came to my first gallery and he bought one of my first paintings. Now, I have sold my paintings also to Spain and into Tokyo, and now they're making arrangements for the, the first of March, I'll be have a big gallery opening in, in New York with the biggest gallery there. School is every day, is learning and learning and learning. And, and you make errors, nobody, nobody's perfect. Hey bro, what's the matter with this thing? In the 70s I started building my film studio. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it. I think that being happy is being at work. Show me what it is to live, Oprah.